So you know that famous saying that sometimes change can happen over decades and sometimes decades of change can happen in weeks and that's almost exactly what we're seeing with artificial intelligence or with AI. It's been spoken about for years and decades and now suddenly every single week what's happening with AI doesn't fail to take you by surprise. If you remember, just last month, I told you about GPT-4. I told you about how this revolutionary new program was and how it could potentially have a major impact. Now, in exactly a month, GPT-4 is starting to look a little outdated. And that's because something more radical, something more advanced, something more revolutionary seems to be happening in just one month's time. That's how fast AI is progressing. Let me just recap for you. Four months ago, Chat GPT was launched. This is in December. It had natural language capabilities that no one had ever seen before, and everyone got really excited. Then in March, GPT-4 was launched, and it was a clear generation better than Chat GPT. Now, meet Auto GPT. It's been spoken about for the last week or so after uh, people like Nathan Lands and a few others started to, they stumbled upon it and decided to put it out there on Twitter. And then it blew up. Those tweets went viral. A lot of people got really excited. And then seeing that, other people jumped onto it and started to do their own development. And that's when this entire thing started to spiral. So very clearly, Auto GPT was not something that was put out by OpenAI, by any other big software powerhouse. It is an open source Python application. It was first developed by significant gravitas and now it's being used by members of the general public to do some really, really crazy things. What does AutoGPT do? Well, essentially it uses GPT-4 as a base to then act autonomously without human prompts. In a nutshell, this is what AutoGPT is allowing people to do. They can create AI agents. Those agents can then replicate if they have to, and they will keep working on a particular task or a solution until it is completed. Also, and critically, they can work with each other in a very collaborative manner. And all of this on their own, with no further human intervention. Anything else? Yes, GPT-4 had no memory. In other words, after you finish a session, it was done. But now, people have figured out how to give auto GPT memory. In other words, these agents can remember. They can remember what they were working on. There are places where that, that memory can be kept. Anything else? Yes. And this is the big one. People have also figured out how to give auto GPT agents access to the internet. They can go to the internet and acquire any information that they need. Now this is powerful beyond belief. Just take a look at some of the wild things that people are doing with Auto GPT just in the last four or five days. It can independently do sales research. It can craft podcasts, give the entire structure for the podcast. It can do market research, probably better than humans can. It can do customer service, something that most humans hate to do. It can be a social media manager. It can be a financial advisor. The capabilities of AutoGPT and its offshoots are so advanced that people are already starting to wonder whether AGI or artificial general intelligence is here. In fact, one of the offshoots of AutoGPT was actually called Baby AGI, and then within 24 hours it grew up to be Teenage AGI. Well, we are probably not yet at fully blown AGI just yet, artificial general intelligence just yet, but AutoGPT is definitely a step closer towards that. And that's both wonderful and it's alarming. What's almost startling here is the rate of advancement. I honestly thought, I honestly thought even three months ago that we were at least a decade away from AGI or maybe longer. And why just me? Anyone who studies or researches on AI would have told you that AGI is something that is, is still a decade away or longer. But now it looks, who knows, by the end of this year, I could be sitting out here and telling you that AGI is already here. I don't know if it's going to happen. No one can tell you what's happening, but I can tell you it is already time to start preparing for that age from now, where everything that we know as of today will change, and it will change in next to no time. Now, it could be fabulous, or it could be terrible. Why the latter? Well, as I tweeted earlier this week, take a look at the capabilities of AutoGPT. AutoGPT can, as I said, reproduce through autonomous agents, have memory, recursively self-improve, have internet access, and hence have access to infinite information, 
keep going till its objective is met. This is essentially a path to every scary artificial super intelligence scenario ever written. You know, the Skynet theory, the Matrix theory, all those discussions we've been having about runaway AGI that then becomes super intelligent and wipes out the human race. Auto GPT and its offshoots seem to have eliminated all the guardrails that would have potentially prevented that from happening until open AGI, uh, open AI sort of switches off access. So access to the internet, for example, that was a very important guardrail. Now it seems to have gone. So we should be concerned. But even if none of that happens, the world is clearly changing before our eyes and in the most dramatic manner possible. At a very minimum, artificial intelligence could be making business decisions in firms, whether to close a business, whether to launch a new product, where to buy stocks or which assets you should sell. You're not going to need necessarily business honchos or business consultants or so many, so many things by the end of the year. Is this the start of the changing or the end of workforces and workforce and offices? I don't know. Is it the start of the end of the world as we know it? Almost certainly. Let me now put those questions to Nathan Lance. As I said, he was the person whose Twitter feed really was one of the places where people started to go to to see what is happening in O2GPT. And from there, the community really took it on and has taken it forward. Nathan Lance now joins us. Uh, you know, you're, you're in Kyoto, right, Nathan? Uh, yeah, Vikram, I'm, I'm in Kyoto. I uh, lived in San Francisco for about 13 years and uh, recently moved out here. So. I have to tell you that along with the rest of the world, I've probably been sitting on your Twitter feed trying to wait for the world <laughs> to blow up or for Auto GPT to come up and do something, something really crazy. So yeah. just help us in dissecting this in, in sort of words of one syllable as you do. Auto GPT, at least on the face of it, seems to be a generation ahead of anything we've seen so far. And it's improving with every passing day. Yeah, it's uh, it's incredible. You know, I, I I just I only discovered Auto GPTs about a week ago and started writing about them. And after I started writing about them, uh, Jeff Bezos followed me on Twitter, and all kinds of <laughs> crazy amounts of people have been contacting us. And uh, you know, I, when I discovered it, uh, it's uh, I discovered Baby AGI, which was created by uh, Yohei uh, Nakajima. And uh, Yohei is a uh, venture capitalist who can't code. And uh, and he just came up with this idea and had the um, GPT-4 help him to create the code and create the paper to explain the code and everything. And in, in, in basically what uh, auto GPTs are, the, the concept is that, you know, when you use chat GPT, maybe some of your viewers are, are familiar with, uh, you know, chat, chat GPT, obviously you have to type to it and, and talk to it with it. And uh, but with, with auto GPTs, the idea is what if you gave uh, say, what, what if you put several GPT fours together and had them collaborate with one another uh, and then gave them a memory to, um, you know, to remember what's been done and also assign them roles. So with a uh, baby AGI, um, you know, he actually has it set up where there is a manager uh, GPT four and then there's two other basically worker GPT fours and he has them collaborate with one another. Um, but, you know, this is a early experiment. Uh, you know, you, you can't do a ton with it yet. The, these systems do have uh, limitations. You know, they um, tend to get stuck and, and have a hard time figuring out what to do next. Everything that you're saying, Nathan, now this is open source. This is not being done by open AI. This is not being done by Microsoft or Google or any of the companies. This is now just people out there taking the power of GPT, building open source software. And that means it's completely out of control. Would that be a right way to say this? Both the, the good parts and potentially the bad parts that I'm going to ask you about could be entirely out of control right now. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it's out of control. I mean, open, open, th these services are still relying on open AI, at least for now. Uh, you know, they, they are, they're basically amplifying what open AI, open AI has, uh, their, their APIs. Um, but you could imagine as other open source uh, uh, large language models come out that compete with uh, chat GPT, then uh, yeah, you could, you could start to say that uh, there's not really a way to uh, control any of this. That, I, I would say that's correct. So just curious, you're talking to so many people around this. What percentage of the people you're talking to, and you're, you've been studying this very closely, what percentage seem to be saying, the human species is about to come to an end in the next five years or 10 years. What percentage are saying there's going to be utopia and we're going to solve all of human problems? And what percentage are somewhere in between? 
when I talk to real friends who've like started successful companies in Silicon Valley, et cetera, I would say, you know, it's probably more like, in my, at least in my circles, it's probably like 10% of people who think that this is a possible end of the world kind of thing. Probably another 20% think that this is going to lead to a utopia. And, uh, you know, the other 70% are somewhere in the middle. Right. I, I, I tend more towards the utopia side. Oh, wait, tell me about that. Why, why do you think this is going to lead to utopia and not lead to human extinction? Um, I, I don't believe in some of the arguments that I've heard uh, about how this is going to escape and that, that it's going to decide that humans should be destroyed or something. I, I, I don't believe this. I, I believe that you can actually program these systems to, to care about human life. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and at least for now, there's, there are guardrails on. And I, I, I personally believe that this is going to lead to major breakthroughs in, uh, in, in things that just totally change the world, like in terms of, you know, healthcare, discovering cures for cancer. You know, I've got friends with cancer and things like this. I think, I think this technology is going to do incredibly good things. Let's really hope that you're correct and it's not going to mean the end of humanity. And let, let's hope that the utopia part also does actually work out. But at a minimum, it is going to change, and you just from some of the examples we've been seeing, and let's remember it's only been, what, three months since, uh, since, since ChatGPT came and then GPT-4, so it's accelerating, right? Um, is it fairly safe to say that 2024 will be nothing like 2022 was? Nothing similar. Everything will have changed. Business will have changed. The way people are doing their jobs will have changed. The way people are communicating will have changed. The world will be a very different place a year, two years from now, for sure. A lot of people don't. A lot of people don't realize what next year is going to look like. It's. I mean, and obviously, no one, no one can predict. But um, it, it's hard to see that by the time that this technology keeps improving, auto GPTs combined with a better model, let, let's say GPT five, let's say GPT four gets three times better, five times better, ten times better. Um, it, it's hard to see how business and money and a lot of things don't have to be reconsidered. Um, you know, on a personal level, I, you know, I, I have some concern. My, my larger concerns are probably around, you know, geo, geopolitical issues, right? Like, what, what does it mean when one country owns that? And uh, do other countries who are enemies of that country, how do they react to that as well, right? Um, so that, yeah. But yeah, the, the world's definitely going to change. And I think a lot of people are, high, even though they see some of this stuff right now and they're like, oh, that's cute or, oh, that's that's kind of useful. I think they're not they're not properly extrapolating and seeing what where this is going to go in a year or two. And I, I, I you know, I think large parts of business uh, are going to be able to be automated uh, with this technology. And on the other side, you're going to be able to turn some people into basically superhumans with this technology, right? You're, right. you're going to be able to have some people who can do the work of 100 people as a single person or maybe in a thousand. All right. And we're going to keep checking back with you every few months to see are we heading towards extinction right. or utopia yeah. or somewhere in between. It's, a, it's an interesting yeah. choice to have before us. And, you, and one of those yeah. is going to work out in the next few years. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nathan. Hoping for the best. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Bye. you. Well, so, so there you have it, and it's always interesting when Nathan, Nathan Lance, who actually was one of the people who really brought Auto GT, GPT to everyone's attention with his, with his Twitter post, uh, and he's clearly in the utopia camp, as you just heard, but even he does think that there's a 10% chance of human, of human extinction, or at least that's what his, his circle is telling. 70% um, of people are saying somewhere in between, but the world is going to change forever.